Dude, I am rather afraid. <laughs> and I would probably start with Squirtle first. So let's dive in. Dashes and shield dashes. Shield dashes? Dash okay, yeah, that's fine. With punishes and anti airs, it's it's like jump away and to forward airs like a good with punish. He actually did four videos. The last video is about PT itself, so he's probably explaining how to switch and, and stuff. I hope so. You could also shield dash from burst range. Why would you shield dash into close range if you have safe ground pressure? That's like Charizard's job. He hasn't talked about uh, Squirtle dash tech. Hopefully, he brings it up. Dashing away and so on. But it'll be pretty risky, and so most of the time you'll play a bait and punish playstyle. Yeah, that's so far that's correct. As shielding means that the opponent can no longer immediately punish nor try to grab you, and if they unshield to try. My problem about this right now is that most people, if they play against Squirtle, at least in my region or my my, my training partners, they barely shield in spots like these. They rather just walk away and into dash attack or move punish my stuff. And he didn't talk about. But this is this is still neutral, right? And this is specials. But he didn't he didn't mention water gun in neutral, even though it's one of Squirtle's most important tools in neutral. And, and he didn't talk about uh, dash attack and cross up dash attack, even though it's like one of the most broken things about this character. Or just want to beat jumps from a distance to put them. Okay, the he mentioned it. Yeah, before Izo says anything about withdraw. Um, this move is garbage. Reverse squirrel Dude, movement. this the move sucks! The best way to, to cancel with the raw is to not use it. It could in theory be used to catch landings as it can beat fast fall air dodge no. and short- No, 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 <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> this is not consistent, please. <laughs> no. Most of the time you just go under the opponent or the opponent uh, lands and shields and then you get punished. Or you lose stage control. Don't use it for- please, never. I use it way too much and each time I think, why did I use that? Yeah, same. Every time I use withdraw, 90% of the time I get punished for it. But heavily. Far up stage, then you could also attempt to withdraw to kill early if No. Why would you ever withdraw in that situation if you can just water gun? It does the same. And even sets up Ivysaur. Plus you don't commit. I would rather be safe and- <laughs> And not miss, than miss and potentially die. This move is so good. Keep in mind that the forward air will have an early strong hit and a late weak hit, which might allow you to combo easier. Same goes okay. for neuter then forward air into a grab at starting percents, as well as it'll lead into dash attack. And around 15% it'll already set up for tech chases. Yeah, then, then usually it's not worth it to go for back air. F fares better on that situation. Shield pressuring of shields instead of delaying back air and actually landing with it. As landing is minus 14 on shield instead of minus 10, which you would get from buffering around. Yeah, it, it can be even safer if you uh, delay it properly. <laughs> if you look closely in the top right corner, you can see how the Mifra just didn't want to live anymore. She just dropped her controller. Look at the, at the blue dot. On the minimap. What was that? The eye. You could also mix up with withdrawal to punish spot dodges and rolls. If you have this close combat situation, right? If you F tilt the opponent on hit, you don't go for uh, withdraw because withdraw does like fifty percent. It gets nothing. You get nothing out of it. If you do a shot up. Uh, landing there, you can extend your combo to sp punch a spot dodge, or you just wait and get more out of it. But if you press withdraw in this situation, you basically throw your advantage state. I only ever use withdraw for tech chase situations. It's fine, it's fine. W withdraw is very limited. It's one of my least favorite moves. But yeah, don't use withdraw for stuff like this, please. If you if you try to read a roll away, you can just dash and grab the opponent could be used as a shield mix-up to set up for early tech situations or during tech chases for tech resets. Yeah, down tilt is really good. I love this. I love that move. Now the thing about down tilt is to, um, you can use it to dash away and anti-air opponents because it's so long active. It's like 6 frames active and hitbox is huge for Squirtle standards. Down smash or down angled forward smash can also work as a 2 frame against a few- Yeah, but it's far from consistent. It's really really inconsistent to oh, try to uh, 2 frame with F smash. <laughs> Dash attack could be safe against shield if done up close as it'll cross up. This can be good for getting out of the corner and will be even better than down air for the purpose of crossing up safely. This okay. can be good for crossing up yeah, safely. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, yeah Squirtle's dash tag is, is kind of insane for that the reason. Of dash 
they DI in or didn't DI at all, then you won't get any combos. Squid Lashing at zero is pretty trash. Hit, so. However, and forward smash will only be used for hard punishes. Down smash can be used. Ah, uh, that's forward wrong. Smash forward smash is super safe, so you can just throw it out, out sometimes. Its range is really uh, long as well. Down smash. The only reason to use up smash is when you get a jab reset center stage, and forward smash wouldn't kill, but up smash would. Uh, there are many other ways to use good up smash. For example, outranging certain aggressive landing options or even out of shield against a few moves or to cover spot dodges or to cover ledge getup attacks. Because it's Squiggle's only move to hard punish uh, ledge getup attacks out of shield. That clip was so ugly! Most could also stand at roll position and be ready to punish rolls with tilts or grabs, react to jumps with full hop aerials, react to regular get up with back air, dash grab or dash attack. Okay, so first are good. Next up will be Ivysaur. There's one thing that bothers me a lot. The fact that he basically didn't talk about water gun and how to use water gun. Yeah, you can even do instant wall jump into stuff, but he didn't go deep into water gun, which is, in my opinion, Squirtle's most versatile move. Hmm, interesting. Maybe he mentions it in the PT video. Uh, it was pretty alright, Joel. It was pretty alright. It was not that special and some infos were kind of off. And she really likes Withdraw. Yeah, <laughs> Withdraw as a mix-up after F3 was my favorite. Dude, Withdraw is so shit. <laughs> okay, let's go to Ivysaur. Preferably, you'll be able to use your razor leaves effectively to attempt to control the rhythm of the game as much as possible. Not only do you want to play a reactionary anti-air game against those jumps or catching landings with grabs as well as it's incredibly rewarding. Okay, first and foremost, razor leaf is not that good for stuff like that. It really isn't. Yeah, I agree. A smart player will just stall neutral. Ivysaur is not able to control the pace of the game with razor leaf. It's it's not possible. <laughs> It's super laggy. Will be really good for platform pressure though, while full yep. hopping and double jumping. Platforms is also where Ivysaur's pressure starts becoming very potent and scary because of Why did he include Nan to down air? What? <laughs> Dude, what? Starts becoming very potent and scary. <laughs> Not only will the down air combo, but when it yes. doesn't, it'll at least set up into a tech chase for grabs and raising. Yep, that's the artillery. Dude, Pulsey, don't, don't spoil anything. But I'm, I'm excited. Full hop neutral air into any other aerial before landing. Uh, full hop air is kind of fishing for stuff. Because if you full up, you just put yourself at a disadvantage. If you get hit once out of your full up, as Ivy saw, you get stomped. But it's it's good at low percent sometimes too to, to punish jumps. Because, of course, people want to avoid your grab. And then you can just start a combo with Nair instead. Buffering short hop aerials will usually not allow you to true combo. You can actually combo back air into VIP or another back air. So basically you can just go for landing landing back air into rising back air, fast fall, and then you can combo off of it. It's pretty tricky, but it's possible. If you hit it just right though, you could follow up with multiple, as long as you also very slightly delay the second back. Yeah, Either like way, I said. Hitting landing aerials will even set up tech chases at higher percents onto platforms. Yep, I love that. Yo, Polti, what did you say about uh, Razor Leaf down there? Well, that clip was actually good. The dash attack won't have any combos, but will pop opponents up for up airs to be a threat. If they air dodge, you'll almost always be able to punish, which will force out jumps most of the time for you to try catching landing. Dude, I love dash tech for that for that situation. It's busted. It does so much damage, it's so quick, perfect angle. So yeah, and dash tech um, can force the opponent to shield if you try to engage aggressively. It forces them to shield and then you can get, get grabs. Dash tech is really okay. Mainly want to try getting full hop neutral air. No. This combo is fake as f it's fake as f it works if your opponent is a toddler. I've never had that combo once in my usual training partners because they just keep SDIing. That's day one combo. Doesn't even matter, um, beast, if, if they're floaty or not. You can just SDI and DI. It will not work anymore. Yeah, you get it consistently because your opponents don't SDI. Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> SDI in against neutral air could mess with the combo and yes. pop out behind Ivy by pressuring most ledge options at different timings with the razor leaf and attempt to react to jumps with vine whip or aerials. Yeah, you can even do a preemptive vine whip just to scare them. Or make it a bit slower before grabbing the ledge with just the whip. 
Mix in the double jump aerial before grabbing. Yeah. Or the that works. Maybe lag is so low, so if you don't plan, you'll be able to mix in an air dodge, back yep. air, or any of your special. Jump I'll tell you. Air. This allows you to cancel the tether recovery and will give you a tiny stall and a slight bit of height. Yeah, I, I did a whole video on on, on tether cancel. Then Charizard will be next. Okay. Like the video. Most stuff about Ivysaur is true, but. <laughs> he didn't talk about my favorite combo of all time, up for up air. It's one of the most cheesiest way, and it's probably one of the things that that gets improved in the future with Ivysaur. It's completely busted if you have it down, and it's completely busted on platforms. But he didn't talk about it, sadly. What else? He didn't talk about ledge trump stuff. He didn't talk about um, the... what's it called? The way that, that Spargo uses to let trap with Cloud, you know? Spargo usually does like the, the jump in place and then he reacts to like a normal get up with uh, back air. You can do this, uh, the same thing with Ivysaur and then you can just convert it into a, a fast fall back air into, into, I don't know, Nair Vine Whip uh, or into Nair into the Vine Whip itself and stuff like that. But he didn't mention that too. He didn't talk about how to use down air actually. Like how to use like run off, double jump down and then drift back to roll distance to make it safe and put yourself back into the favorable position. Yep, and pivot grab, and pivot grab. Pivot grab is fucking busted. Holy shit, it's broken. It's like one of Ivysaur's best whiff punishing tools. Or the whiff punish tool with Ivysaur. Quit spams it. It's insane. But overall it was pretty, pretty decent information for beginners. Now for the part that I'm most interested in. Charizard. Charizard plays a very call-out heavy game. He's heavy, has an additional double jump, big range, and lots yeah. of... Yeah. Double jump. <laughs> pressure will be applied mostly from the air. No. You can pressure with back air, but everything else is super committal. Charizard's main pressure tool comes from the ground. That's his biggest strength, his ground options, and not his aerials. Except for like back air, because you have to respect back air as the opponent. But everything else, it's you can hit him for free. If you if you see Charizard jumping with his face towards you, it's super committal. If you think they'll jump, or if you think they are going to attempt to rush at you, a simple dash attack or tilt will break shields as well as aerials. I've never in my life did flamethrower into dash attack uh, shield break. Never. I swear I'm the only player who doesn't flamethrower neutral. Hey, just sitting there. Flamethrower in neutral is. Good in certain matchups, and if it's not it's good in certain matchup matchups, it's only good uh, if you are below a platform. Yeah, those B reverse flame throws are the ones where you eat the hard punch because they can roll. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If the opponent decide if the opponent decides to roll in against Charizard, which is good because Charizard sucks against cross ups, you get hard punished to oblivion. Neutral air if he's turned around as it starts from behind. And can anti air jumps really quickly. Or yeah, I really like um, back air into into now. Well, that's that's a really good option. Or fire. Shield bashing a lot will be really important as he has an amazing out of shield game. It's yeah, and then you get grabbed. Uh, in, the, in the current meta game, you're better off not actually shielding as Charizard most of the time because people are using their brains and they try to space around your fast out of shield options or try to cross you up. The kind of play to that is to to play around their their spacing. And overshoot a lot. I try to overshoot a lot. That will be really good to also shield dash into mid range where Charizard's or tilt will be a threat at max range. No, don't shield dash into mid range because then you suffer shield drop frames. Eleven. That's huge as Charizard because you have really slow startup on your mid range tools, and most characters just grab you because you're Charizard. Everyone and the mother knows that Charizard likes to fish for out of shield options, and then they grab you for it. And why even? Shield dash if you can just walk, and yeah, it, it sounds like a it sounds like a Smash Four <laughs> description of Charizard. Forward air, dash up smashes, dash grabs, or dash. No, don't 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 dash grab, please don't dash grab. At the same time, though, because of how big he is, he'll be easily pressured back, easily anti-aired, easily hit in that pressure. It might just be better to attempt calling out the opponent. Dude, those flabbles, flabbles clips are killing me. Flick right, left, and press shoulder button jump into C stick for the aerial. Not only will it kill at ridiculously early percents, but it might set up really well into edge guard. Yes, but back for back air as a kill confirm is not reliable in the current meta game. At least when you play on a on a on a higher level. 
Yeah, if you DI like that, it obviously will kill. Most of the time, however, you'll be using this mid stage at mid percents. Where yes, I love this. That's whack, but it's, it works. Dude, that was so ugly. What? What the? F Your only other combos will be through landing aerials. So landing up air, landing down air, and landing neutral air. All of which are rewarding. Landing down air sucks, by the way. It's like minus 18. It's super slow. What the fuck am I watching? Can really the dome be a neutral be a disadvantage here? Yeah. Okay, let me watch again. He, he talked about neutral, but he never mentioned Charizard's dash attack. That move is broken. It's ridiculous. Charizard dash attack is one of his most important tools next to down tilt and, and um, his, just his, his speed in general. And he didn't even talk about uh, back row dash attack. Oh, yeah, he talked about dash attack for shield breaking after flamethrower. What the f Dash attack is used as a quick punish against dashes and whiffs, and will provide no combos, even when you hit with the late sour spot of the- That's wrong, by the way. That's wrong. But it's only stuff I know, <laughs> sadly. You can actually combo the latest frames of dash attack into forward air, if you hit a normal getup with it. But that's, instead, that's jank and cheese. Or rather, it's, it's a gimmick. Air. Up tilt isn't something you'll hit much on the ground, as instead it'll be used for quick punishes against landings. Charizard will ideally want to get right under the opponent to find up tilts, up smashes, up B mix ups, parry punishes. The problem about that is all of the all of those options lose to fast fall air dodge. The thing is about fast fall air dodge is you can cover fast fall air dodge with up tilt to jab, or you can just dash attack uh, for it, or at kill percent you can go for down smash if you know they're going for air dodge. You could also try to attempt combo breaking with up B. And rely on the super armor and big initial hitbox to reverse. Yeah, that's the that, that's the beast. Stuff like this only works in America. I guarantee it. If, if I do stuff like that in my region, I get bodied for it. Or you triple jump after forward air and neutral air, fire, or directional air dodge. You can double jump back and triple jump in with aerials or fire too. Everything that Charizard does in that spot is reactable. Double jump away from the ledge and be reverse your fire. Okay, that, that's good. The B-reverse fire. That, that's actually a viable option. He didn't mention forward throw, a ledge invincibility into F-tilt. How broken that is. Charizard's main job to do stuff like that. What? Izzo just covered low to mid percent Zard, which is not realistic at all, and didn't talk about Zard's actual job. I feel like, as of now, these um, guides for the Pokemon itself sound more like if you would play the Pokemon on its own and which is which is not realistic at all. My main gripe with that is uh, like it was mentioned earlier in the chat is that he didn't talk about the invincibility with flamethrower and, and all that jank at higher percents with F-tilt and the pressure and how to cover multiple options. Yeah and, and he mainly showed crackhead combo Charizard which is terrible. Okay let's dive into the last video. Pokemon Trainer at the highest level has a lot of versatility, but will require a lot of practice and studying to understand which Pokemon to prioritize for each matchup and when to switch according to percents or situation. Each Pokemon specializes in each of the three different playstyles in Smash. Squirtle plays a bait and punish game, Ivysaur plays a pressure heavy game, and Charizard plays a call out game. Of course, each Pokemon can also play the other playstyles, it's just that they don't thrive with the other playstyles as much, if at all. I, I don't know man, it's, it's... this is way too black and white. Pressuring Squirtle safely as much as possible without getting grabbed is the way to go. Ideally, you'll... No. There's one thing about Squirtle that you have to do, and I'm suggesting that you just avoid him. <laughs> Squirtle is Kirby on crack. Since if you hit him up again or off stage without a jump, he might feel the need to swap. Which if you ever swap in that spot... You should consider dropping the character. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but sw sw swapping without a jump is like the worst thing you can do. You can also attempt to grab Squirtle's shield dash if you ever want to. And that's why you don't shield grab. Uh, shield grab. That's why you don't shield dash as Squirtle. Even if you shield dash as Squirtle in matchups like Lucina, you don't get anything off of it because everything is safe. A common strategy that you'll hear and can probably imagine is to start with Squirtle, combo him till around 60 70%. 
then switch to Ivysaur to deal more damage and try scoring the kill. And if the kill seems too hard to get, then you switch to Charizard to try surviving and abusing Rage. But in reality, most of the time, this won't be the play in a ton of matchups. Yes, thank you. Prioritizing just one or two Pokemon could be better. For example, against fast, close-ranged characters, it will usually benefit you to prioritize... What is this? Every matchup is way too specific. For example, of course, Ivysaur and, and Charizard suck against Young Link in neutral, in neutral. But you need Charizard's and Ivysaur's tools to keep up an advantage. For uh, especially Charizard, uh, Charizard's ledge advantage is way too important for certain characters. Again, this is way too black and white for the character. This character is way more complex than that. I told him he shouldn't include specific like that. But yeah, exactly. That's what you should do. Floatier or slower characters, it'll be a bit harder to generalize since all Pokemon do fairly well. Players yeah, let me play Charizard against Vario. <laughs> yes, please give me Charizard against Vario. What 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 are these what are these numbers supposed to mean? They're like certain situations for all three Pokemon in every matchup, and then you have to play accordingly to that. You can't break down matchups as complex as Smash Ultimates to priority numbers or like percentage usage. It's it's not possible. Not with Pokemon Trainer. Uh, I think generally in the matchup, how you should pick Pokemon use percentage. You'll have to play a lot and figure out yourself how to strategize around each matchup and when to specifically swap. As explaining when you should generally swap is almost impossible and more of an intuition thing. No, there are certain rules to to swapping Pokemon. They all stale each other, but it's nothing that you really have to pay attention to. You have to usually. Yeah, you, you have to pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's super hard uh, to to follow, dude. All those clips are lead smash clips. <laughs> what the f Dang it! For my part, I think very abstract about the character. So of course, I'm not the target audience, but. Most stuff is like, I don't know, it, it's weird, it's weird. If I can be 100% honest, all those clips are Elite Smash only. You will never hit stuff like that in tournament. Never. Uh, okay, what is my conclusion? All of his videos regarding the Pokemon itself, they are more centered around if you play the Pokemon on, on their own, instead of like setting up the other Pokemon or, or converting off of the other. And I think that's wrong. It's wrong to think about a character. I think the main aspect, you need to play them as a team. Even in this video, in which he talked about Pokemon Trainer, as a whole, he barely went into it. Yeah, usually, if you want to teach someone about Pokemon Trainer, you, you have to tell them th that they need to play as a team. He mentioned more specific stuff. For my part, I would mention how you can avoid certain windows, or how, how you can avoid certain kill confirms if you play that, that Pokemon at that time, or how to avoid certain ledge options in specific scenarios. But that's matchup specific, like I said, and really, really information heavy. And I don't like that he didn't mention proper, proper ledge traps. Proper ledge, ledge traps as Charizard, because that's the most, most important thing. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a broad, it's, it's a broad guide to the character. It's pretty simple, but uh, it, overall, it was, it, it was pretty decent. If, if you, if you start out on Pokemon Trainer, it's probably one of the mo best resources you can get, or a basic, a basic guide. But this guide only works to a certain level, and once you have to think more abstract about the character, it, this, this guide is not that useful anymore because he, he misses a lot of important stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a good video to learn from, but yeah, it's not up to up up to date. There's some stuff in the in, in the videos, especially Charizard stuff, especially Charizard stuff. It is not meta relevant anymore, or it's not viable. And I think Charizard is the Pokemon that you have to improve, especially Charizard Ledge Trap. Charizard Ledge Trap is number one priority if you want to improve with Pokemon Trainer. Even Atelier's Charizard's Ledge Trap is ass. His Squirtle is insane, and his, his Ivysaur is godlike, but his Charizard Ledge Trap is like one of the worst I've seen. And he didn't even talk about Dash Attack, man. Charizard Dash Attack is broken. Have you seen Charizard Dash Attack? That move is minus 12. In frame 10, you can overshoot with it, you can catch landings, catch spot dodges for whatever reason, you can catch normal get-ups, you can let catch drop-down double jumps. It's broken. It's completely nuts. But instead, he only talked about dash attack in the context of flamethrower into shield break with a dash attack. And yeah, the, the flamethrower um, reset on the airtime is like the number one thing you, you, have to, you have to know about Charizard. And he didn't talk about it at all, which is kind of sad, but yikes. Bye bye. See you next time. Junge.
Ivysaur is the best Pokemon. It's not. 